Alright, here we go. Episode 1 of our Chronicles of Drunagor Age of Darkness painting tutorial. We're going to be starting off with the Skeleton Archers. I know if you're looking at this, there's four in the base, but I did a test one on the fourth one. I didn't like how the color scheme turned out, so I decided to go with the card art basic color scheme. And this is how it turned out, and I think it looks pretty good. So we're going to go over a pretty uh, quick and easy tutorial on how to do this. If this is your first time at the channel, or if you want to follow me for more Chronicles of Drunagor painting tutorials, hit that subscribe button. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's get this, let's get this going, because I'm going to be doing the whole set. All right, let's go. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is scrape off all of the mold lines. I use a crafting tool from Citadel and some files that I've gotten. Uh, you can use a craft knife as well, but make sure you get all of those off. After that, we are gonna mount them onto some old spray can tops with some sticky tack, and then we're gonna spray it with some Mechanicus Standard Gray or whatever you have that's equivalent to that, just a gray flat base spray. We're gonna start out with a series of dry brushes and we're gonna paint our base because we don't wanna get this in the last step where we're gonna go over the boots and everything else. Now when you're doing a dry brush, make sure you get most of it onto a napkin or a paper towel, whatever you're using. And we were just gonna slowly dry brush over the entire portion of the miniature. This is one of my favorite parts about these miniatures is that the base is already kind of built in for like a stone look, which makes it so much easier to save some time when doing our bases. Our next dry brush is gonna be some long beard gray. We're doing the same thing. We're just gonna build up the contrast from our Dawnstone to our light beard gray to our last color that's coming up next is Prex City White. But we're just gonna slowly build up our dry brush. And the last color we're going to use is a little Prexetti white, and we're going to do a nice, slow, easy dry brush on this. Don't try and jam it down the base's throat. And our final dry brush is going to be a more gassed bone, and we're going to do basically this entire miniature, not the base. And we're going to get a nice little highlighted dry brush on our miniature. We want to really concentrate on the bone areas, obviously, but this is going to make our contrast paints that we're going to use here in the next step really kind of stick out and give it that nice little coloration that we're looking for. So hit that whole model up. Don't be afraid. Obviously get 95% of that pigment off your brush and do nice, slow back and forth strokes to build up that, that dry brush look that we're looking for. We're now going to use some contrast paints and basically what contrast paints do is save you a ton of time and if you are new to this channel or if you've been watching this channel, you know that my main goal is to save time. I'm all about saving time, not about cutting corners, but basically getting the miniature up to speed to the point where it's good enough to go on the table and we are happy with our product without sacrificing too much. Contrast paints do exactly that. They get you a decent look and get it on the table without having to waste so much time. So we're gonna hit it with Skeleton Horde on all of our bone areas to uh, basically do the one and done for our skeleton portion of our miniature. Now we're basically following the card art for this entire miniature. And we're gonna use some Athermatic Blue, which is another contrast paint, to do the shoulder pads and some of the hand guards on our miniature. When I did the test one, I did some other colors and I didn't like it. Um, I'm gonna stick to the card art because I feel like 
the artist and the game creators wanted it to be that way. So let's follow what they wanted to do because it adds to the flavor. If you get a bunch of different color schemes, it doesn't look like the card. It kind of makes it look crappy. So we're going to follow the card art and the entire scheme of this miniature. For our boots, we're going to use a little Saigor Brown. Just be a little careful when you're painting the boots, obviously around the base of the rim. We want to make sure we don't get too much onto the dry brushing we already did on our base. For our skeleton bow, we're going to use a little wild wood. And this is going to be like a darker brown. And we're going to do some highlights on this later on in the video. For our chest, we're going to do a base coat of Night Lord's Blue. Now we're going to go over this with the contrast paint here in a minute, but what this does is give it a nice, subtle, dark blue undertone. And if you've messed with contrast paints a little bit, you know that they kind of pull back from the paint that's underneath it, and they kind of poke through. This is going to poke through just a little bit. You're going to see a very subtle blue underneath our chest garb. So we're going to do this. Uh, base coat real quick and then we're going to hit it with black templar contrast paint in the next step And once that Night Lord's blue is finished, we're gonna hit it with a Black Templar. If we were to do a lighter color, it would stick through a lot more, but we're just doing a nice dark blue undercoat. Um, we'll mess with some of this in future videos. Now we're gonna move on to our base colors and we're gonna use Calador Sky from Citadel. Now I primarily use, typically use mostly Citadel paints. And the reason for this is that I was playing Warhammer at a young age and I started painting miniatures at a young age and these were the only paints that I could really find in my local hobby store. So I started using these. Are these the best paints? I don't know, maybe. Maybe not. Are they the most expensive? Yeah, yeah, they sure they sure are. Um, but I have been using them since I was a kid. They've never failed me, they've never let me down. They've never given me a bad product, so I have nothing bad to say about Citadel and their paint products. So that's what I primarily use. But we're gonna use this specific blue on our robes and garbs of our miniature. Now be very, very careful when you're going around the head and the shoulder area, as it's very easy to get it in places you don't wanna to get so just be careful take your time I typically put on some good music listen to a book on audible or something similar and just enjoy the painting experience because that's why you're doing it you enjoy it it's not like oh god I got a painting and this is terrible no I look forward to this every single time because it's an escape and it's relaxing And this is what all the blue should look like. For our quiver, we're gonna use the little Morn Fang Brown. Now the straps connect to the belt, so take it as far as you want, or don't take it as far as you want, just do the basic outer portion of the quiver, but I'm taking a little bit towards the belt area. For our belt, the under straps underneath the arrow and the wraps around the hand guards or wrist guards, I guess you could say, we're going to be using a little steel legion drab. Now again, be very careful, 
be cognizant of the areas you painted. If you get some on the areas you paint, just go over the paint that you need to that got covered up. I use a wet palette 99.9% .9 of the time. And the reason I use this is because the paint stays longer. You don't need as much paint when using a wet palette as you do if you're using a well or a tile or something comparable. I like to do a wet palette and then if I want to stop, I can put the cover on and then come back a day later and my, my paint is still wet and still usable that next day. So I'm hitting up all of these areas. I'm taking my time. I'm also using a size one brush for this entire area and not going too crazy, not going fast. This is going to be a tedious task, obviously because we're painting four of these and we are doing repetitive motions. This is probably the worst part for me for mini painting is when you're doing batch painting. It's the same thing over and over and over and over again and it gets very redundant and boring. But like I said, put on some music, put on a book and enjoy it and just get through it. I know you're busy painting, but why don't you take a break and head over to our Instagram at nerd.nights and uh, check out what we got going on over there. We're always posting what's coming up next, miniatures we're painting, and so on and so forth. So go stop by and say what's up. For our arrow, we're going to use a little dryad bark, and we're also going to use this on the stitching for our quiver. For the, I guess you could say, outer portion of our pauldrons, our shoulder guards, we're going to use Retributor Armor. So just again, be very careful, but if you get some on there, just go back at it with the Athromatic Blue. We're going to use a little iron hands steel on a couple portions of this steel area, I guess you could say. The ends of our skeleton bow, the little engravings he has on his chest, or her chest, whatever it is. There's a little chain that comes off the bottom of the quiver that we're going to be hitting up. And the little spikes on top of the pauldrons that we're going to hit up real quick now we're going to do the front portion of the miniature on the chest and then we're going to dole it down here and the uh, washing step that's coming up real quick And finally, for the last base color, we're going to use Sotek Green for our arrowhead and for the fletchings on the arrows that's in the quiver. After all those base paints are finally dry, we're going to use a little wash and we're going to start off with Drakenoff Nightshade. We're going to do this for the entire blue portion of our miniature to include the arrowhead and the fletchings. And while we're doing this, we want to be cognizant of the areas that we've painted. We do not want to get this dark blue wash on the Steel Legion drab or other areas. So just be a little careful, take your time when you're doing this.
for the rest of the miniature, except for the bone areas, you're going to use add Agrax Earthshade. Now, if you wanted to put some Agrax Earthshade into the eye sockets as you feel that maybe the skeleton horde didn't get enough in there, you can absolutely do that. Or you can darken up just a little bit more if you want. I did not. I'm just trying to save some time, so I moved on from that area. But we're going to use the belt. We're going to do this on the chest. We're going to use this on the bow. You don't really need to do it on the, the boots as they are already dark enough. It's not going to make a difference. And on the quiver, um, our miniature. All right, we are moving on to the final step. We're going to use Aramon Blue from Citadel. And we're just going to take strands of that blue and we're going to highlight it with this blue. It's going to be a subtle, almost unnoticeable, I mean, you'll notice it, but very subtle color change from that dark blue or that navy blue, I guess you could say, to this very light blue. So hit the raised areas up and it's going to make that nice little subtle color change. For our hand wraps and outer areas of our, I guess you could say, wrist guards, we're going to use a little Baylor Brown on this. And obviously, you do not get any in the recesses. You just want to hit those raised areas up and just make it a nice little subtle change that you're going to have a two-tone color for it. For our belt area, we're going to use a little Carrick Stone, and again, we're just hitting the raised areas and do a little edge highlighting on the bottom of our belt. We're going to use Doom Bowl Brown for a couple things. The first one, we're going to hit the areas of the skeleton bow up, and we're going to do what's the grooves that are in between each other. Obviously, keep those grooves, the recesses dark. We're also going to do an edge highlight on the boots, and we're going to use this for the quiver. Um, be very careful when you're doing the boots. Try and get as much of the edge as possible, and just kind of basically outline it like we're in kindergarten. For our metal pieces, we're going to use a little Rune Fang Steel to brighten those up, which include the top and bottom of our skeleton bow, the spikes, and the little chain piece that is off the bottom of our quiver. And to brighten our arrowhead up a little bit, we're just going to use a little cyberite green. And for the fletchings as well, just pick out a couple of those little fletchings. Do the top, bottom, and middle portion of that arrow to kind of give it that nice little arrow pointing look. And that's all we're doing. Because that's the last main color we're doing. And then we're just going to do the rim of the base and we are done.
Mechanic is standard gray for the rim of the base. Let that dry and we are D-U-N done. And that's it, you're done. You did a fantastic job, looks great. I'm proud of you, I'm so proud of you. Uh, I just wanna say thank you for everybody watching this episode and if you are a subscriber, or if you're thinking about subscribing, hit that subscribe button, let's go. I appreciate everything um, you watching this episode. But until next time, paint on.